Yeah, hello. So this demonstration will show how to use the slot tool and Katia's part design workbench to create a thread. It's primarily for my students at CMU. They've got an assignment coming up and assignment deals with sweeps. And so I want to give them a something to work with as far as a negative space sweep, which would be the slot in Katia. So let's begin and I'll show you what I have already. I've got a sketch that I extruded as a pad four inches and then on that sketch I have a point actually it's not on the sketch it's a point I put that's um, one inch away from the center axis and actually I constrained the sketch to it so this circle that you see has a diameter of one inch what I'm going to create is a unified national course eight threads per inch with a one inch diameter bolt. So I also have the pad and the part body and a chamfer at the end. So I'm going to hide the sketch. Now I'm going to create a helix next. And the helix is by default not in the part design workbench. Two places you can go to find the helix tool. One is under mechanical design and you can go down to wireframe and surface design. I prefer to go to shape and generative shape design. When you get here, you can find the wireframe toolbar. And so on the wireframe toolbar, probably back behind the spline, if you haven't used it lately, is you can find the helix. So helical shape, um, looking at this, I'm going to keep this simple. I'm not going to cover all the options. I can do pitch, revolution, I can do height and pitch, and then height and revolutions. I'm going to do pitch and height, which requires me to enter the pitch of the helix, which I'm going to do is 0.125. And the height will be 3 inches. The starting point. So the starting point defines the radius, or if you want to look at it as diameter, the diameter of the helix. It's really the radius. So that's why I have the point here. So it's a half inch in radius L, which is going to define the diameter of my helix. That's why I have that here. It's already created in advance, so I can select it. I use the coordinate point creation tool to do that and just put it half of an inch in the X direction. Yeah, there are some other options here for creating other points, but I find it easier just to create that in advance. So I'm going to select this point. The axis. The way my model is running is going to be the z-axis. You can have and pre-select a line if you've got a line already running to define your axis, or you can select an axis from the axis system, which is what I'm going to do. I want to right-click. I'm going to go in the z direction, z direction from the default axis system. It's going to be counterclockwise, and the starting angle. I'm going to leave that at zero. Sometimes I will back it up. Actually, I'll tell you what, I will back that up 180 degrees. So I want to go and I want to enter a negative 180. That find that's useful sometimes when I'm creating the profile for my profile for my slot. So sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't. So sometimes I'll even just go 90 degrees, but that backs that up from the start position 180 degrees. So it adds a half of a revolution to the beginning um, in front of the beginning of the helix. No taper here, so none of the rest of this I'm going to worry about as far as in this demonstration. So when I hit OK and you can see the helix. Next I've got to create my profile. Again this is Unified National Course profile. I'm not going to make it exactly like Unified National Course, but it will be eight threads per inch. So I'm going to make it close um, to um, a, a UNC. So I want to start sketching right here and I prefer to do a position sketch here on a reference plane that's located here. So I've got a video on how to do that, but I'm going to do it again here. So I'm going to find, and I'm still in the GSC workbench. You can go back to the part design workbench if you want, or you can do it here. But I'm going to find the reference plane tool. I want to create a normal to curve reference plane. And the curve will be the helix. And the point where it's located will be the end here. So I've got a nice reference plane. That The key to this is that reference plane is tied to the helix. 
So if I come back and I modify the, the helix any, the reference plane is going to move with it. Next, I'm going to do a position sketch. I'm going to put my position sketch origin right here at this point. So I'm going to the sketch tools and behind the, the sliding sketch tool, you can find the position sketch tool. And I have another video on this, but again, this is, you can see me doing it here as well. So position sketch, the reference is going to be the reference plane I just created. Uh, the origin type will be projection point. And what I'm going to do is just project that in helix there. You can check out my horizontal vertical directions and flip those if you feel most comfortable, but I'm going to leave that as it is. So when I go to sketch, it will actually be flipped around this way. So I'm going to hit OK there. Now the sketch. Unified National Course Profile. I'm just going to get this close. I'm not going to leave it perfect, but uh, it's going to be close. So it's eight, it's uh, eight threads per inch. So the way I like to do it, I'm just going to sketch out the profile or something close to a UNC profile. That was a profile too. So UNC has 60 degree angle. These are going to be symmetric. So I'm going to go ahead and make those symmetric around the horizontal direction. Now, the UNC, 8 threads per inch, so that's going to be a pitch of 1 eighth. So that would be normally 0.125 here. But I like to leave a little bit of a top. So the top of my thread, I like to leave a little bit flat. So when I have my students do this, I have them crop this off just a little bit. And like I said, it's probably not exactly the standard for UNC, but it's... It's close to get a nice looking thread going. So I just take off that last five thousandths. There are some formulas that you can refer to to get it more accurate if you want to. But that's satisfactory for my students in this assignment. And then the bottom I make five thousandths just to get a little flat bottom going on. So notice I've got a green sketch. Symmetry. Uh, the point one two here. The helix it has a pitch of 0.125, so this is just short of the the helix pitch. I need a 60 degree angle here. I changed that after I did the symmetry on purpose, and then a little flat bottom going on. So that's my profile. The key to this profile, I'm going to get out of the sketch. The key to helping this to work well is that it is a position sketch on a reference plane that's at the end of this helix. And there it sets. Now, notice I'm working in a geometric set as well. So I wanted to activate my part body. I've got to go back to the part design workbench. So I'm ready to execute the slot tool. Now, when I get into the slot, and let me just go ahead and activate that. This is the negative space sweep. The profile is going to be the profile that I just sketched and the center curve is going to be the helix. Now this is going to create a really bad looking helix and if unless you're you do the setting I'm getting ready to show you. So um, by default it's going to keep angle with the profile control. The way to solve this really really bad looking and what's happening here is it's trying to keep that angle to the helix as it sweeps around and that's just causing problems with the threads. So what it needs to do is it needs to stay normal to a selected entity. And that selected entity just happens to be the Z axis in this case, the same as the axis of revolution for the helix. So I changed my profile to control to pulling direction. And the normality reference is going to be here, is going to be the z-axis. So whenever I do that, you can see that it creates a much better looking thread. It actually creates a thread, the previous thread. I'm not sure what that was, but uh, if you get that problem uh, and you're doing a thread like this, the pulling direction to the to the axis of revolution for the helix is going to be the key. There is my thread.